Hello everyone and welcome to my first let's play. The game I will be playing is called Eador Masters of the Broken World on the highest overlord difficulty. On forums I have seen quite a lot of people complaining about how difficult this game is even on lower settings. So I want to show you that it's actually possible to play it on overlord and it, the game is still enjoyable. I won't be showing things like how to build buildings or uh, learn spells, recruit heroes. More I will focus on things like how to build your economy properly or uh, how to get through first few provinces without uh, a trained hero and units. I'm not saying that the, my strategy is the only way how to play Overlord, but uh, it works really well for me, so uh, let's get into the game so I can show you. Campaign, load, here we go. I've tried to skip the tutorial, but I didn't find a way how to do it, so I just played through it. And save the game on the first screen where it will appear after tutorial. And here we are. Our world and five small shards from which we have to pick one we will try to conquer, conquer as first. At this point we want to pick a shard which will provide us with a building uh, that can improve our economy or give us better units. So here we have merchant court, it improves our income. Nothing here. Oh yeah, actually uh, the first uh, building I'm usually going after is Crystal of Force before anything else. Why? This is a really cheap building, you can build it really fast and it gives you an option to uh, give your heroes a quest. At the point where you will be finishing these quests uh, you, your economy will be still quite weak and the bonus you will get as a reward, either gold, gem or income, or usually the gold, is a really welcome bonus and on some maps it can even mean the difference between losing and winning. So I will pick this shard. I'm not even checking other buildings. Crystal of Force for me is so important that I just don't care what else is there and what else is on other shards. I just go uh, straight away for this one. Okay, and Overlord. When we get on the map, the first thing we want to check are provinces around our capital and locations which we will get in our capital province. Uh, depending on this, we will decide how we will progress through the first string of provinces and uh, which locations we will go after. And here we are. Uh, so here's our capital and the first string of provinces. So what we can see is two sea provinces. I really, I'm not really happy to see sea provinces because you can't conquer them and they have no income. I would much rather see free settlements here. Uh, what else we have? Uh, free settlement, free settlement, lizard manlands, and brigand outlaws. Okay, this means that uh, we want to go for provinces which have the weakest defense because we will be fighting them with a hero with no experience, with level zero units. So the less defense uh, we can get, the better. So we won't lose any units uh, and get. Uh, maximum possible uh, experiences for them. The order of conquer here will be free settlements, brigand outlaws and then lizardman lands. Lizardman lands on overlord uh, are quite uh, hard to uh, uh, conquer because lizardmen have around 32 maybe 34 even hit points. It's quite hard so I always let uh, Lizardman lands as the last uh, type of province to conquer. Now, from these two, which one we will pick first is the one that is uh, that has uh, weaker defense. What kind of defense or how many units de uh, are defending these uh, provinces? We can guess depending on the population of the province, which is shown by the amount of these blue spots. But you can see we have five here. 
compared to 4 in here, it means that this province will probably have 6 units defending it, compared to this one, where I would say will be only 4, maybe 5. So, the Order of Conquer, this one, this one, Brigands, Lizardmen. Now, let's check the locations we have. Ancient Ruins with Brigands. Okay, this looks good. Brigands, uh, it's the same uh, defense as in Brigand Outlaws, so we can uh, defeat this really, really fast uh, and get experience to, uh, for our units. This is good. Lost Souls. No, that's not that good because it's defended by Ghosts. And Ghosts have really high uh, melee and range defense, so they are basically immune to uh, these types of units. Uh, killable by Casters, at least for for tier one units, only casters can uh, can kill them. And because I usually don't go with casters, I just ignore uh, locations uh, defended by by ghosts. Druids, that's better. They are quite easy. So this will be probably the second location I'll go after. Uh, elves. Now elves are tier one units, but uh, they are the best range units for a tier one. And uh, without trained army, they can uh, cause heavy losses, and uh, that's a thing we really, really want to avoid because the success uh, on Overlord depends on how many trained units you can keep in your army. If possible, def uh, avoid fighting this kind of armies where it takes a long time to get uh, to enemy ranged units and uh, go after them only with army which can uh, survive it without losses and just run over them really fast. Necromancers, okay there will be two level, uh, I mean tier 2 units, sorcerer and ghoul, so the same, wait until later. Minotaurs, level 3 units, no chance there, 60 or 70 hit points each, so just at this point, where I have access only to tier 1 units, I will probably ignore this completely. Now, let's have a look into our capital and the buildings we can have. So, what we want to get to really fast is Barbarian Camp. Why do we want to go there? It's because Barbarians are the units we will be using the most from tier 1. They are really cheap, hard hitting, and uh, uh, they actually uh, are not affected by a loss of HP because when they get low on HP, they enrage and they hit even harder than when they have full HP compared to other units. Where when you lose a lot of HP, those units are hitting uh, weaker and. Uh, in lower, um, I mean, in longer fights, uh, it uh, it's quite a problem for you to handle damage without healers. So for the start, barbarian is really uh, the best unit to go for. To build a camp, we need first to build tavern, really cheap, plus one income, so really nice. And now we get to heroes. A hero I almost always pick as first is a commander. The reason for it is that commander compared to other heroes has one extra unit slot right away. He gets command promotion to get more unit spots more often than other heroes and he uh, is not dependent on gear. He just provides your units with bonuses, no matter what kind of gear uh, you have. I just use him like uh, standing behind my units, casting, and that's all. Uh, heroes like Warrior and Scout, I'm not even talking about Wizard. Wizard is uh, really not the kind of hero you want to pick as a, as a start hero. He depends heavily on which spells you have access to, and because we don't have any just no way how to start with wizard properly. But the scout or warrior? Well, on lower difficulties these two are probably better to start with than a commander because uh, they can actually deal some damage 
compared to commander by themselves but uh, it's because on lower difficulties units uh, you will encounter have uh, significantly a lower amount of HP what, what I'm talking about is on uh, overlord even the weakest units you will encounter will have 20 plus HP well, maybe 18 okay uh, but uh, on lower difficulties it's like 8, 10 so scout with his initial gear can inflict like 5 to 7 points of damage with each shot so he can get rid of unit in 2 shots on lower difficulty but on overlord it means you will have to shoot like 4 times one unit to get rid of it and by the time all of those units will be actually close to you and at that point scout uh, starts to be really weak and uh, you will really miss that one unit com extra unit commander provides you with for warrior the same he is so heavily dependent on the gear that from the start unless you, you get very lucky with uh, gear drop you just can't do anything with the warrior and uh, he will get killed almost instantly and again you will miss the one unit provided with commander so let's go for him and now let's see what he has okay full on units but these units are really weak and I really don't want to play with them I just dismiss them why I'm doing uh, this instead of putting them into garrison is because each unit has upkeep and I don't want to pay the upkeep uh, for units I'm not gonna be using so I just get rid of them the last unit militiaman with the lowest upkeep only two I will put into the garrison uh, the reason for it is uh, as long as your fort has at least one unit in garrison it can be conquered in one turn so when enemy hero comes he will have to spend uh, a few turns sieging the keep until he can uh, get into it so this will give me a chance to eventually get back if uh, and uh, get rid of that hero if uh, things uh, go really bad so now when we have this set, uh, the last thing we will say to our hero just to explore a province, we can't do more without units and go into another turn. We have found a location, let's see what it is. Okay, with the vampire, no chance there. Level 3 undead unit, the strongest undead unit. Uh, with tier 1 units, probably unbeatable without losses, so another location I'll probably just ignore uh, for this map. Now we can build another building and that building, before I go to Barbarian Camp I built one more building and that's a library because I don't want to get into fights without spells and I will talk about those spells uh, in a moment. So let's build it and while we still keep exploring we get into another turn and again we have found the location, Rain Tower what we have here, Goblin and Orcs Okay, that's much better than the Vampire. Uh, five, it means that we'll probably get uh, three Goblins and two Orcs. Can be uh, three Orcs and two Goblins, but still quite easy to, to uh, defeat. So this will be a location we'll go after second, probably after those Brigands. But for now, we still need units and now we'll get them. Let's build that camp. And recruit our barbarians. We have four spots for units, so let's get four of them. Two, three, four. And now we get to the first problem you will have to handle on Overlord. When we check our income, we are already at minus 14. And we want to get this into back into positive as fast as possible. And this is one thing you will be finding constantly on each map. Uh, how to get to positive numbers fast enough before uh, your treasury gets into such negative numbers that you won't be able to uh, go back into positive and build stuff before your enemy just overruns you. 
that's why we are checking the income of provinces around us so we can go to the uh, richest provinces first and try to get to green numbers okay now when we have units we need spells so let's talk a bit about spells we have access to three spells at the moment we have inspiration here uh, this increases morale and stamina of our units well this spell is useful from time to time when you are fighting units that can increase uh, decrease your morale but uh, from what we have around us there is nothing like that so we can ignore that spell uh, at the moment next what we have a spark this spell is actually not that bad on the uh, lower difficulties because uh, when you have units against you with like 10 HP with three sparks we have access to up to uh, you can actually get rid of one of those units before they get to you but uh, on overlord when you are facing units with 20 HP plus this is not good you can deal uh, like 10 points of damage because actually the 4 is uh, uh, still lowered by the resistance of opponent units so sometimes you even deal only 1 point of damage with the spark so this means you just hurt one unit a bit and that's it that unit will still get to you, still deal, deal damage and uh, you want a spell which will allow you to get rid of one unit before they get to you and the spell is fatigue as units on Overlord have 20 HP, which is much higher than on lower difficulties, with Stamina it's not the case. They still have around 10 or 12 HP and with Fatigue you can hit them uh, for up to 5 uh, damage to Stamina. And units without Stamina can just sit there and do nothing. So by this you can get rid of one opponent unit uh, for a uh, long enough time to beat some others so you don't have to face them at the same time so that's why I'm taking three fatigues and I change this only when I'm uh, fighting undead when I go for a spark because undead units are immune to uh, stamina losses so now we are set for our first fight our first skill we have is Discipline for our hero, which means our units will have uh, one extra HP and one extra resistance, which is quite decent for a first skill. And in the next turn we will go into our first fight. So this is it for the, f for the first video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'm looking forward to see you in the next one. So see you next time.